aren't negatively charged. Protons have the same charge. <coughs> a neutral atom has no electrical charge because the same number of plus protons and minus electrons. And electrons, very small, they move around very rapidly, a lot like a mosquito. Mm -hmm. Symbolism for all of the elements is in the middle of the box, you write the one or two letter symbol for the element. H for hydrogen, HE for helium. And the source of the names of the elements often is a very interesting story. If this were a two, what would this symbol be? Did I hear helium? No, the symbol would be H-E. What language from antiquity is helios a synonym for the sun, or the name for the sun? Do you have any trouble in believing that I'm right when I say that this element number two is named for the sun. Anybody doubt that? Can you um, explain on the periodic table what this is and why, and why they're listed differently in um, PowerPoint? Or is that not supposed to be? Um, are, are they not the same type of? Um, I will explain. Let's look at what this one is, the way it's symbolized. The question is good, and not all periodic tables lay out the elements in the same symbolic way. And if you ever find an interesting periodic table, then I'm in the market. I'll pay you probably 50% more than you pay, just because I like The best one I got was in Argentina, where I paid one peso. And at that time, a peso and a dollar were the same. These have it not as squares, but as hexagons. And on each side has more information than will fit on that chart. <coughs> Here is one from the American Chemical Society, I think, that has a picture of each one and has more information about how they're found in nature. I still find that book, The Elementus, that I have as an e-book, I found that it's on, I can get from Amazon for $19, so I'm going to be ordering the book itself, and we can pass it around, where you get to see the nature of each element. Here is an issue of CNE News, Chemical and Engineering News. All members of the American Chemical Society get this magazine. Once upon a time, in September of 2003, they devoted the whole issue to the elements. So every opening, here's potassium, bananas, how many new bananas were a good source of potassium? Okay. Do you know then that bananas are radioactive? Potassium has two isotopes. One of them is a natural occurring radioactive isotope. We'll talk about that. So, there are many sources. The one that I'm looking for shows the periodic table not so much as a flat block, but begins to show you why. If you notice, at the top there are only two. Uh, then, in the first row, let's just go down through the common ones and see how many are in row or period one. So we go 2, 8, 18, 18, and then right here, you go from last.
Kentucky and Anderson Special Interacting Orbitals. And we'll, in this lecture, begin to see how atoms are built, how God has some very interesting mathematics, and we study this quantum mechanics. Okay, so I'm shopping for periodic tables that are unique, and I don't have them all in this one folder, or I would show you, show that one to you. Okay. So, adding together the protons and the neutrons, you get the atomic number. The neutron is the, yeah, just the subtraction. Protons equal the electrons if it's a neutral atom. I mentioned, and we'll get into it deeper, why some atoms are really happy to share or give away. How some atoms on the other side of the periodic table are really not complete. They're really deficient. They really would like to have another electron, but in the natural state, the number of protons equal the number of electrons, protons plus neutrons give you the atomic mass or the atomic number. Yes? Um, is the atomic number the same as the mass number then? Yes. Okay. And which one on the periodic table? On the periodic table, it's the bottom left one. This one is the top right one. You can always start with just the few things you know, like hydrogen and helium and lithium. You know those are the one, two, three elements. Hydrogen has one proton, and therefore it's atomic number one. Then helium is two, and then lithium is three. It's always good to approach an unknown with something that you do know. If something's complex, start by giving it a simple question. You may see a big math formula. Test it with a condition that you know and see if you get the right answer out of the formula. So the places that it's put on the table, one, if you look through and are interested in my periodic table, they may put things in different order, but wherever you see the three for lithium or the number 11 for sodium, that is its atomic number. Anybody have a calculator? Tell me how many electrons in mass it takes to equal one proton. Electrons are a lot smaller. 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4 smaller. So how many electrons does it take in mass to equal a proton or neutron? Please give it to me in four digits, even though only two significant digits are allowed. It may be the year your great grandfather was born. Come on. What's the reciprocal of 5.4 times 10 to the minus fourth? No, the reciprocal is not one. Who takes this many? If this weighs, no, no, no. If this weighs this fraction of this, then how many of these, how many of these uh, of the electrons have the mass of one proton? It's just a reciprocal of this number. That's before. So 1851, a number probably easier to remember than 5.4 times 10 to the fourth, but it's the same number just expressed as the reciprocal. 1854 times the mass of the electron in atomic mass units equals the mass of a proton.
proton or a neutron? Do the math. I may have remembered the wrong word. 1851? Now let's begin to talk about the symbolism and how you can look at boron, which is number five, and you'll see that five, which is the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and then 11 is the mass. <coughs> How many neutrons in this element of boron? 11 minus 5 is 6. 11 minus 6. See, this, this is what's getting me about this textbook. I missed that one. You all see, the, what should the numbers be? 11 minus 5 is 6. I don't, I wish I could depend on the text. All right. Number of electrons equals the number of protons in an atom. So they got that one right. I predict that you'll get the next slide right. 